It's the Proxygenators Fabricatum from Digital Taxidermy. 3D printable modular vehicles. Print them, build them, move them, swap them. They're totally radical. No, these are scale models. Out now. It's the Proxygenators Fabricatum from Digital Taxidermy. 3D printable modular vehicles. Print them, build them, move them, swap them. They're totally radical. No, these are scale models. Out. It's the Proxygenators Fabricatum from Digital Taxidermy. 3D printable modular vehicles. Print them, build them, move them, swap them. They're totally radical. No, these are scale models. Out now. It's the Proxygenators Fabricatum from Digital Taxidermy. 3D printable modular vehicles. Print them, build them, move them, swap them. They're totally radical. No, these are scale models. Out now. It's the Proxygenators Fabricatum from Digital Taxidermy. 3D printable modular vehicles. Print them, build them, move them, swap them. They're totally radical. No, these are scale models. Out now. It's the Proxygenators Fabricatum from Digital Taxidermy. 3D printable modular vehicles. Print them, build them, move them, swap them. They're totally radical. No, these are scale models. Out now. It's the Proxygenators Fabricatum from Digital Taxidermy. 3D printable modular vehicles. Print them, build them, move them, swap them. They're totally radical. No, these are scale models. Out now. It's the Proxygenators Fabricatum from Digital Taxidermy. 3D printable modular vehicles. Print them, build them, move them, swap them. They're totally radical. No, these are scale models. Out now. It's the Proxygenators Fabricatum from Digital Taxidermy. 3D printable modular vehicles. Print them, build them, move them, swap them. They're totally radical. No, these are scale models. Out now. It's the Proxygenators Fabricatum from Digital Taxidermy. 3D printable modular vehicles. Print them, build them, move them, swap them. They're totally radical. No, these are scale models. Out now. It's the Proxygenators Fabricatum from Digital Taxidermy. 3D printable modular vehicles. Print them, build them, move them, swap them. They're totally radical. No, these are scale models. Out now. It's the Proxygenators Fabricatum from Digital Taxidermy. 3D printable modular vehicles. Print them, build them, move them, swap them. They're totally radical. No, these are scale models. 
out now! It's the Proxygenators Fabricatum from Digital Taxidermy. 3D printable modular vehicles. Print them, build them, move them, swap them. They're totally radical! No, these are scale models. Out now! It's the Proxygenators Fabricatum from Digital Taxidermy. 3D printable modular vehicles. Print them, build them, move them, swap them. They're totally radical. No, these are scale models. Out now. It's the Proxygenators Fabricatum from Digital Taxidermy. 3D printable modular vehicles. Print them, build them, move them, swap them. They're totally radical. No, these are scale models. Out now. It's the Proxygenators Fabricatum from Digital Taxidermy. 3D printable modular vehicles. Print them, build them, move them, swap them. They're totally radical! No, these are scale models. Out now! It's the Proxygenators Fabricatum from Digital Taxidermy. 3D printable modular vehicles. Print them, build them, move them, swap them. They're totally radical! No, these are scale models. Out now! It's the Proxygenators Fabricatum from Digital Taxidermy. 3D printable modular vehicles. Print them, build them, move them, swap them. They're totally radical! No, these are scale models. Out now! It's the Proxygenators Fabricatum from Digital Taxidermy. 3D printable modular vehicles. Print them, build them, move them, swap them. They're totally radical! No, these are scale models. Out now! It's the Proxygenators Fabricatum from Digital Taxidermy. 3D printable modular vehicles. Print them, build them, move them, swap them. They're totally radical! No, these are scale models. Out now! It's the Proxygenators Fabricatum from Digital Taxidermy. 3D printable modular vehicles. Print them, build them, move them, swap them. They're totally radical! No, these are scale models. Out now! It's the Proxygenators Fabricatum from Digital Taxidermy. 3D printable modular vehicles. Print them, build them, move them, swap them. They're totally radical. No, these are scale models. Out now. It's the Proxygenators Fabricatum from Digital Taxidermy. 3D printable modular vehicles. Print them, build them, move them, swap them. They're totally radical. No, these are scale models. Out now. It's the Proxygenators Fabricatum from Digital Taxidermy. 3D printable modular vehicles. Print them, build them, move them, swap them. They're totally radical! 
No, these are scale models. Out now! It's the Proxygenators Fabricatum from Digital Taxidermy. 3D printable modular vehicles. Print them, build them, move them, swap them. They're totally radical! No, these are scale models. Out now! It's the Proxygenators Fabricatum from Digital Taxidermy. 3D printable modular vehicles. Print them, build them, move them, swap them. They're totally radical. No, these are scale models. Out now. Hello there, welcome it's taxidermists and gentle peeps. It's uh, Hello, digital taxidermy and under the hot end here with another episode hang on we seem to have a bit of where's our streams gone where's our face gone where's our face hello, our beautiful hello. face oh dear hang on <laughs> hello what's happened here well we're here say hi martin <laughs> we are here we are here say hi martin hi Talk, talk to the men. Talk to, talk to Ragtag while we, uh, while I sort out this uh, snafu. <laughs> we were, we were just in a, a big conversation before this stream sort of went live on, on the hot ends and <laughs> benefits of like expensive hot ends and sort of our points of view on it. Have you got any points on, on hot ends? Or are you just sort of what comes in the box and play with it? That is yeah, I mean, I, I, will, I will always just take what comes in the box, really. Um, recently just tried the... Um, recently just tried the... Uh, blah, 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 Micro-Swiss. It's um, the Peroxygenator Fabricator from Digital Taxidermy. Um, 3D printable modular yeah, vehicles. Yeah, I, I went back to the MK8. Print them, build them, um, yeah. move them. To be because... honest, I, I generally run mostly MK8s, if I'm honest. The standard hot end out the box. Um, I have got a Micro-Swiss that I do swap out for certain material, but certainly not for PLA. Um, pet cheese is kind of not really worth doing, in my opinion. It's it doesn't perform that much better with PLA hmm. or or pet cheese. Uh, so I'll stick with the MK8. I have got a E3 DV6, which is, it, it, in fairness, is a cracking little hot end. Um, I don't run them on the enders, that's for sure. <laughs> You've got to make a whole new mounting system and everything if you're going to run them on an ender. So um, it's doable. It is. There's plenty of guys out there doing it. There are, but again, I think it's a bit overkill. Yeah. Uh, you know, general PLA and that side of things, it's, it is overkill. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, there is the, the simple problem of the clogging that can happen quite a lot um, I think... with them. Uh, if you're using PLA, it's, it's interesting how, uh, in actual fact, uh, how they usually ask you to season crepe pans and frying pans yeah. The the advice is to season your hot end. <laughs> put some extra virgin olive oil in it and, and put it in the oven. And you're like, Basically, right. You buy your hot end, took it for four hours on 180 degrees. <laughs> yeah. Before yeah. applying filament. <laughs> yeah. It's it's not exactly the um it's not exactly the way to go. No, it's it's Again, it's one of those, it's personal preference, but I think for the the small domestic enders and things, the MK8 is more than ample, certainly to get you going. Certainly to get you going until you've sort of like hit every snag you're going to come up against. There's no real point in swapping 
you all end into something expensive, you know? Yes, indeed. Now, right, this is really annoying because this was working until oh. I clicked That's... go live and uh, then it, it decided that it was going to stop working. So um, we'll, we'll be back. We'll be back into full running mode in a second. Just bear with me. Because uh, <laughs> I am still still learning how to do all this, so we're having mild technical difficulties. Mild. <laughs> I've got a picture of Neil on the screen, so that's something. We've got two pictures of Neil. There you go. <laughs> um, but we will. Uh... Oh no! Well, it's not what we wanted to do. Oh god. <laughs> We'll get there. We'll get there. Yeah. We've got half a Martin. Hey, we've got half a Martin. There we go. Wow. We've got a whole Martin. There we go. And we're back hey. in the room. Right. Uh, hi there. Hello, Hello. taxidermists and general peeps. This welcome to episode two of Under the Hot End and uh, with Digital Taxidermy. Um, so tonight we have a few exciting things not only do we are we going to be giving away uh some of the churches if we can persuade 15 people to get on stream and watch then we will be holding a competition for that so tell your friends tell your enemies tell your mum tell your brother tell your sister tell every tell everybody just tell them all uh, knock on the neighbor's door just exactly just knock on doors me. knock on yeah. doors literally yeah. anybody and everybody shout um, out your window exactly Whatever. um we're, we're, we're also uh happy to take any questions from the chat if you have any questions for uh martin especially because he is uh up to date with the latest in 3d printing um Some and i like to chime in with my own uh ranty opinions from time to time um, <laughs> Also, uh, Martin has a special treat underneath his, uh, what is it, the mermaid towel over there. Um, uh, I'm not sure which one this one is, actually. I, it was under a dinosaur earlier. Oh, it was under a dinosaur. Just some random... Nice. <laughs> so we, we've got a, uh, a printer that has been uh, sent for us to take a look at. So there'll be uh, an unbox and uh, Martin unbox. will be setting that up. And uh, hopefully, if all goes well, apparently the instructions and everything say that it shouldn't take too long to put together. Fingers so crossed. we should be able to get that together and uh, get the print I on and maybe get... I've heard before in, in previous instructions. Uh, and uh, it doesn't always go that way. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So it'll be a good test. It'll be a damn good test. Um, uh, and yeah. we'll, we'll be uh, pitting that up against our summations of a its main competitor, which, uh, of course, is the uh, indomitable Ender 3. Um, think, it's something that we all have a reference for, uh, and we'll be able to grade it between the two of those. Uh, Martin will be running some tests maybe over the coming week, and we can see some of the side-by-side uh, -side results. Uh, in next week's show so yeah. i'm hoping if all goes well we might we might possibly get a print on the go today um if all goes well we might even do the end of a print who knows yeah nice. anything could happen happy days indeed <laughs> have you got something pre-sliced and ready um no but apparently you can run it off the end of slice so i have got plenty of stuff on the end of okay. pre slice so um <laughs> Worst case scenario, we'll just rob a card off of that and chuck that in. There's apparently there's a couple of models in the box, so we'll we can see how it goes. So I suppose we might as well introduce that printer. What what is it you've got? Dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. We've got the artillery hornet. Um, basically, we've been in, I've been in contact with Artillery for quite a while now. Um, and we were speaking last week and said, hey, we're doing a live. And next thing, two days ago, they said, oh, we're sending you the Hornet. We want you to sort of put it together and see what you think. And uh, it arrived yesterday. It arrived that quick. 
that's Challenge. that's pretty good is, is, is that also uh quite representative of what uh what their usual customer response is yeah they've basically what they've done is they've set up a uh holding warehouse now in germany right so that is what is catering to europe and us in the uk at the moment so is artillery based in china as per all the other print manufacturers pretty much they're, they're very big in america okay they've got a big big following in america um they've got they they run the the genius is is one of their main ones and the sidewinder okay which are the, the bigger brothers if you like to this one this is they, they brought this out as a entry class printer so it's kind of your entry level like the end of that side of the printing yeah, yeah. sort of what's it what's the like. build volume is it the same build volume yeah, it's, it's a 220 20 by 250, I believe. So it's pretty much on, on par with the Ender size-wise. I'm, I'm sure it's 220 220 250, somewhere around there. Nice. So, but there's quite a few little um, nifty quirks with this one. They, they, the appearance is... They put a lot of effort in, a lot of work into. They've done some new things with the uh, Z-Rod. The hot end's a little bit different in the extruder. Oh, okay. So yeah, it, we'll it we'll we'll fun. take a we'll take a look at those, I suppose. What's the uh, yeah. what's the price tag on uh, the uh, Hornet then? You're catching me out there. Cool. <laughs> you are catching me out. Do, to be do you do you need me to do a little Google search? I think you might need to do a little Google search. I mean, I'm pretty sure it's on the higher end of the two hundred range. I believe. Okay. <laughs> Let me have the a look. Hornet, yeah, Ragtag. I know. Um, know. It's, they, they're coming up at uh, two hundred. They're coming up at two hundred. You can you can pick them up for two hundred pounds. So yeah. in in the yeah. same in the same price range. Um, exactly. It, yeah, yeah. Uh, it says two twenty by two twenty by two fifty. So pretty yeah. much the same as an Ender. Do they, uh, do, what's the build surface? Well, I guess we'll find out. Ah, right, okay. So on, uh, artilleries are a bit different, and it good in some ways, but annoying in others. Um, it's a glass build plate, textured. But the thing that artillery do is actually stick it to the build plate. So it's not so removable. Instead of being able to remove it, when it's actually... People, right, when are people going to magnetise glass build plates i know mm -hmm. well, well, that's that's what i want to know and yeah, when i well, when well, i very still... first got my ender 3 pro well, i wanted to around with it i wanted to magnetize my glass plate and what i meant by that is to effectively just glue a magnet sheet to it exactly um, and well, i mentioned that. this well, in a in a forum and everybody was just like you're <laughs> crazy i am yeah glad you're with us carl it's actually very nice of you to be with us lovely um <laughs> basically my one flaw with it so far that from what i've read is that bill plate is glued it's, it's stuck with like an m3 almost um, now the problems that I've I've heard from other users so far is when you do the adjustment knob, occasionally the the screw that knob goes up on spins. Yeah. The issue you've got there is how the hell do you hold that that screw? What? You've got the pressure on the glass to try and get it to lock in. Right. So that, what I've, what I've heard so far, I'm hoping, fingers crossed, we we ain't got that issue. But... So the the uh, the way is sort of uh, obviously this comes from Luke Hatfield's advice with the Ender Three, which is to put a little M4 nut on the underside. Exactly. Uh, the only thing being is that if you I, if you can't hold it from the top, you need to lock nut at the bottom to hold it to tighten it. But once yeah. that's tight, 
you should be fine and then yeah. that that will get round that plus you yeah, add more yeah. compression to the springs as well so yeah i mean that's that's the thing once you get the pressure on the yeah. spring it will hold that that uh screw if you like in place it you can get enough to actually tighten him up reduce him yeah 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 i mean it, but without being able to access the top of the screw that that adds uh, a considerable extra yeah. bit of work which yeah is a... It, it's a in my well, opinion, I guess the only the only solution is to take a look. What's in the box? 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 Yeah. Oh, so Carl, Carl's been, uh, well, Carl's in the same sort of circles that I'm in, to be honest with you, um, Neil. He, he's in a lot of the groups I'm in. He's... He, he knows his machines. He knows what he's on about. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. But no, I was, I was pleasantly surprised with the, with the actual delivery speed was actually quite insane, actually. I was expecting, I was thinking, mm, it might not be here for the show. And then when I got a call, quite a nice big bit of foam, man. So I think, when, it, when I actually... Sort of, I was in the middle of work, funnily enough, and I get pinged all the time when my deliveries are coming and all the rest of it. Yeah. So when that actually pinged, I thought, all right, well, I've forgotten that and looked, and I thought, oh, it's actually here. So, yeah, that was impressive. Nice. This is actually really nicely laid out, to be honest. The phones. Hmm. Look at that. Nice. Got yourself That's a bag. Nice. You is there nice anything in the bag? bag? Oh. What's in the bag? What's in the bag? What's in the bag? Ooh, full size SD card and USB reader. That's quite cool. Is that spare bearings? I'm hoping they're spare wheels. Yeah. <laughs> and the spare end stop. If not, we're going to be doing a DIY build from scratch. Nice. <laughs> um, well, the only because this was it was this was supposed to be an easy assembly model, isn't it? Yeah, apparently. So I'm hoping they're spares. Now, okay, so they've changed it because some of the ones that I've bought have moaned, oh, you don't get a spanner, or you only get one spanner. Now, you get a nice chunky range of Allen keys, so that's quite cool. Nice. And you get a double-ended spanner with a 8 and a 10 on it. Is it just pressed out of steel, though? No. Oh, wow, it's a proper that spanner. A proper spanner. That is an actual that is spanner. Actually... That is a really nice spanner. <laughs> okay, here's a little, here's a little, uh, here's a little side piece for you. Do you know why it's called a spanner? No. How about you, Carl, in the chat? Do you know why it's called a spanner? And how did you get two? That's bang out of order. You send me one car, I'll do an unboxing live. <laughs> <laughs> okay, nobody seems to know why it's called a spanner. So this goes back to the evolution of the, um, of the musket. So when you went from the matchlock musket to yeah. the flintlock, in between there was the wheel lock right. and on the wheel lock you had a little square square thing that you put a tool on and you used it to turn it now, because the rifle well not the rifle but the musket was an evolution from the the crossbow and when you load a crossbow and you pull it back it was called spanning the bow the spanner was the thing ah, you used to span, span the gun. The ah, so that's okay. where that's where it's called a spanner. That's why it is a spanner. And it's why it's called a wrench in America, because you use it for wrenching stuff, because they didn't have they didn't have that type of gun over there. Now that's quite nice. What what is that? That is a spool holder. 
Is it? Yeah. It's like an injection molded and screwed together spool holder. But it only has a ridge on one side of it. Eh? It only has a ridge on one side of it. Yeah. What's to stop it? it Yeah, but what's it to stop it going over the top? So what's it It to stop it going that way? Because it's sort of... Mm, I don't know. Well, that's that's something to test. That could be interesting, couldn't it? That that could very be interesting. Might end up with a spool spinning round on the bed. Yeah, <laughs> we'll find out, I suppose. We will find out. Right now, this is this is the other new thing, innovation from them, if you like. That is actually the Bowden tube. And all the wiring for the hot end. Right. Like, it is, it's got... The Bowden runs through its own harness, the wiring harness. Is that changeable? Can you take the Bowden out? I'm going with no. <laughs> right. That is... No, I'm going with no. So, oh. that must be replaceable, I'd imagine. Although I'm, right. I've not seen anything on it on the likes of Amazon yet. Right. But I would imagine that must be a consumable item. I but am you know now I am now having a look for further information yeah. on that. I haven't seen any spares for it yet. Okay. Well, yeah. ca- carry on. I'll, I'm having a look for information. Yeah. I'll, I'll find honest, out. Well, that, that spool holder, right? it's, it's actually quite... I like it. If it works, we will test it. I like the way they like emboss their name on... I don't know if you can see it on my cam. It's pretty crap. Hang on. Um, they've actually sort of embossed artillery into the side of it. So that's quite smart. But I'm... Um, Again, will it affect the rolling? We'll see. Ooh. That's quite Right, cool. okay. Um, on the oh. artillery website, yeah. the uh, Aviation Plug GX16-8 integrated moulding line Y060 all-in-one cable to link Hornet's extruder and filament. How much in US dollars? Uh, I'm going to go with 30. $68. What? So you're telling me if my Bowden dies, it's £68 for a new one? All-in-one cable exclusive designed. New generation of clean cable management. 60 odd quid. Yeah. This powder metal has a long time. <laughs> Although, if you look at the diagram, that is not a consumable piece. Your right. extruder PTFE is already in its own hot end fix. Hang on a second. Uh, let me see. Um, no, that's that's not going to work there at all. Is it? Right. So um, let me just uh, bring up the information. Ca- carry on. I'll, I'll bring up the picture for everybody to see. Um, so yeah. yes, there, so you won't. You won't have to. Um, what? You won't have to uh, replace the entire thing at all. That that won't be a thing. Um, right. So, uh, for whatever reason, again, I've it's got to set this well up done. again. So, yes, uh, let me just get this going and I will bring this up for everybody out there in TV land to see. So they sent me a um, <laughs> European. 
Oh yeah. Yeah, so luckily obviously I've got quite a few, but that well, it's a good. That, that's that because one. we're in Europe. Yeah, but we yeah, no. <laughs> just just no. <laughs> but anyway, okay. We can get around that. That's not the first company who's done that, to be honest. I've had a few where they've sent. And I'm like, mm, I'm not in uh, France. <laughs> yes. All right, this is yes, we, we, we have safer plugs. That's that's how it works. Yeah, we have plugs at work. Yeah, we, we have safe plugs. Oh, damn, this is, this is packed so damn well. It's insane. I'm impressed. Really? Mm. Right, this might take the entire live stream just to unbox it. <laughs> oh, we'll we'll get there. We'll get there. Oh, right. Um. Okay. So I've managed to rip the pack in, and it's got some weird bluey stuff on. But okay. Right. I like that they've actually cable tied the uh, gantry to this. <laughs> Right. So that's actually quite a nice touch because that physically cannot move. How heavy is it? Eh. Yeah. I wouldn't say it's monstrous. Uh, bear in mind you've got two stepper motors on it. You've got your extruder and you've actually got your Zs on the top. Okay. So what they've done is they've reversed the housing of the the Z stepper, instead of being at the bottom, it's sat on the very top of the gantry, which we'll just, I guess we'll have to see how that plays, because it, it feels like it kind of makes the whole thing a bit top heavy. Yeah. You know. Which is not necessarily ideal. No. I mean, but you then, do have the option, of course, of printing stabilizers and stuff. Um, yeah, and um, I suppose we'll see when it's actually bolted in how sort of tight and firm the base holds the gantry. It's going to make the biggest impact, isn't it? Well, yes, exactly. Yeah. Hang on. So uh, we have the Artillery Hornet aviation thing here. So... <clears throat> You can see you have the all-in-one cable PTFE, which goes yep. down and meets at the top of the uh, hot end uh, yep. heat block. And then in, uh, that heat block has a um, no-pass bit. Um, yeah. And then so you put your bit of PTFE lining um underneath that and trap it between the hot end okay so uh that um that bowden tube and power plug is non-consumable so you should not have to replace that well, for 68 dollars <laughs> let's hope Okay, that looks like fun. How heavy is that? I don't know. Um, certainly a little bit heavier than the gantry is. Um, I guess I'll probably say what five bags of sugar. Is that is that a solid? Can you turn that upside down a second? Oh, okay. So you've got your power pack, and then everything else seems to be you just, your screens here. Are they molded plastic parts? So, yeah, inject, injection molded parts, which are actually, they're really nice quality. I'm quite liking these. Hmm. But I'm like, they're not smooth, if you like. They've got a slight texture to them. Yep. So, yeah, I quite like that. That's 
How about the uh, the uh, X rail, the, the the Y rail? Um, is that wide? Is it thin? Is it like no, the? Um... It's a double, very similar to the Ender Pro, but not in height. So it's a single height this way. Yep. With a double width. Yep. Um. Yeah. But it's supported in more places. Well, yeah, what they've got, I'm guessing there is under here. I'm guessing. They've got a cross, you've, you've got your two length accesses here, and they've okay. ran a cross support underneath this one. Yep. Bolted through, which is. There's a couple of bolts through that, and that side's got like a. A plate underneath. Plate there. I'm guessing there's another running this way. Back here. That it all bolts to. Yeah, it's um it's definitely seems sturdy. You haven't done the What bed. about the side to side wobble? Yeah, there's a bit of side to side on the bed. So uh, no, uh... not front to back, side to side. Yeah, that way to that yeah, way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's got a bit of wobble there, so he's obviously... I'm guessing we're... Yeah, we're running on eccentric nuts. So that should be fully adjustable. By the looks of it, each one, each wheel... Right. One side, you've got a pair of eccentric nuts. So they're going to do that to create your torque. Your yep. tension on it. Yep, yep, yep. This side, the opposite side, is just two rods. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Say, the same, the same as the ender. Pretty much, yeah. It's the ender, yeah. Exactly the same design on the the ender. Um, only thing I don't particularly like there so far. I'm going to be total crucial, critical with it. Is the leveling knobs are actually quite a way in there. Can you, can you see there? Just about. Are they, it, are they quite small, are they? Oh, wow. Yeah, I'm not overly fond on that. Oh, right. Yeah, they're that proper. To me, they could do with. Yeah, you could almost do with one. You know those aluminium ones you can buy on Amazon? Yeah. They're quite big ones for like eight quid. They also look like they're tucked in rather than being like 20 mil, 20 mil, like yeah. an, a, an inch in from each edge. They, they could do with being literally probably an inch bigger. Yeah. You know, overall. So half an inch aside. And then that way you would actually have it more or less than a dial roller. Yeah, but the actual position of the... Um, yeah, they're the... set sort of... So the, the screws are what, two, two inches in from each side, are they? Yeah, um, let's have a look at it here. Let's get right under it. So yeah, your screw is the screw... It's literally there. Oh, right. So it's not even in it's... on the diagonal. So you can't put a diagonal line from the corners. Well, you screw, I can see them. You can just see them through the build plate. It's there and there. Oh, wow. Okay. So, yeah. It's, um... Oh, they. You, you can still get a diagonal through the corners, though. Yeah. Let's have a look. Yeah, you'd still get the diagonal through it. It is actually running diagonal. Right, okay. Uh, it's just they're set in a very long way. Very long way. That is uh, an awfully long way. Yeah. Which, I suppose, realistically, that's going to assist in... Will it assist or will it cause more? It should assist in 
not creating bends to a degree. Yeah. To a degree, because you're actually more uniform, aren't you? Yeah. So time will tell on that one. So what are you feeling, Carl? Are you liking the look? I mean, I like the, you know, I like the look. They've thrown a bit of colour on it. Um, yeah. I mean, to be fair, I'm more a function over form kind of guy. Um, like, I I don't care what it looks like as long as it works. Um, I would say it definitely appeals, it, it definitely would have an appeal to uh, people that would often print enhancements. Um no, does I it think... come does it come in a range of colours or is it just only It'll available in one? Hence the Hornet. True. True. I think that's what they were going with. Um, but it could probably benefit now, it could probably benefit them to do them in a choice of colours. Yeah, well personally what I thought when I first seen the Hornet, well, alright, that looks funky. I wonder if they do a white. Quite contemporary. Yeah. You know, it would look quite nice in quite a modern house. I'm a purple kind of guy. Purple. A bit of blue. You know, something to cater for all. I think it, personally, the way I'm looking at it, if they'd done different colour shrouds, you could then start targeting, like, a wider audience almost. You could be sort of targeting... Well, it, be, it becomes its own selling point. Voice. It becomes its yeah. own selling point, you know, you can choose your own colour. Yeah. Sort of a bit of like customization on your printer. I like the colour of it, but bottom line. <laughs> we can work out the book. Well, I suppose we better get putting it together and we'll find out. To be honest, Carl. <laughs> Will it work out the box? Who knows? Who knows? Um This is, uh... Ah, I know where those wheels go now. And that's quite nice. So that's the hot end carriage. And... Basically, that's where the wheels go. So we got no wheels on a carriage. We're a wheelless carriage, boys. We're right. Okay. Over. So that's that's the that's the wheels that are in the bag. I'm guessing. Yeah. Looking at it, I mean, well, they, that's actually quite a nice touch. For it. They they put a breakout board inside there, splitting it to the three fans because you've obviously got the hot end fan at the front. Yep. And then you've got your two cooling fans. It's got two cooling fans. Yeah, one either side. They've gone look. You've got one there, and if I turn around, you've got one there, and nice. then the hot end fan is there. And it's it's got a nice duct to it as well, so you don't yeah. you don't have to print one out of the as your first print. I'm curious on the duct because I'm wondering if that angle's right. Looking at it, oh, so it's got no back on the duct. No, unless that's on the. Hang on. Uh... <coughs> no. No. Yeah. Of course you have. No, the carriage is on there. It's just not screwed on there. Oh, okay. 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 So we've got the carriage, and it's got a back, but. I'm wondering, seeing these angles here, yeah, where it comes up and turns, I'm wondering how effective that's going to be. Or is it a case of slightly out of direction? Or Because the way, looking at it from there, it almost looks like it's directing the air off the top of the nozzle. I don't know. With the, way, the way it's looking down the camera, it looks fine. Yeah. It, yeah, it looks it looks fine because you you've got you've got that tapering 
and then it sort of compresses it and you've got that motion towards the sensor the the center in the in the yeah. outer curve i don't know i do I'd, I'd say i'd say it looks fine is it have you got a silicon sock there i noticed there's not one on the actual yeah. hot end uh, this is another good question. Is there a silicone sock? I don't think there's a silicone sock. Because that's quite a small hot end. It's a, a small block. Yeah. If I get, if I get the other, the standard um, ender, if you like, it's actually a really small block in comparison. So yeah, that's yeah, mass, what you're looking at when you're looking at block. Mass wise, it's a bit different, is it? Yeah. Um, it, we were talking mm -hmm. hot ends before. Obviously, the one that we're all familiar with is the um, no, the one that we're all familiar with is the Ender Three's uh, MK8. Um, what what is that? Is it recognizable? Uh, is it a proprietary model? No, this is something a bit different, I think. Oh, okay. Okay, this is quite interesting. I'm getting quite interested now, boys and girls. Okay. So, we've got thermostat coming here. Another two little wires coming out the other side. But the block itself is just a tiny little square underneath. Yep. That black block. Well, if I hold the MK8, gotcha. See what I mean? So yep. that that block is more like the. It's a little bit like the GTEx on the A uh, A20 or the the original A30. Actually, that's a similar sort of size as theirs but it's it's right on top of this breakout board which is unusual yeah so you've got your breakout board where you plug everything in and the hot end block is more or less on the top of it more or less sat on it okay so that's unusual it'll be interesting to see sort of if there's any effect there over a long period of time is that so? Is that surrounded in a metal a metal uh, heat sink again? Or? Yeah, it looks like it's actually in an anodized black metal box. Yep. And yeah, it's, it's hard to make out from this picture. There, you've got two grub screws that go through the block. They're probably actually holding the hot end. Yep. If you like, the actual hot end cartridge inside of it is probably bolted by those two. But yeah, yep. that. It'd be interesting to see the long-term effect on this. Because there's lo loads of little like connections and things there. So, yeah, that, that could be quite interesting. I'll have to keep an eye on that one. The Dragon Hot Ends. Nice, Carl. They're, um, they've actually got a really good rep at the minute. Um, there seems to be a lot of rage on them. Are they worth the money? Depend it's all gonna depend on what you're printing, Carl, to be honest. Um PLAs and things like that. It's all gonna be a case of you're gonna to have to dial the new hot end for the cooling that you're using. Yeah, I've seen it. Is which one are you on about? Carl, is it the blue one, or the red one, the black one? They, they've got a few out now. Um, TPU, okay, TPU and ABS. ABS, why? <laughs> um, simply why is all I'm going to say there. <laughs> um, I Personally, I think if you're going to do ABS, you may as well be printing PETG personal opinion um 
TPU, I can understand it for a TPU, definitely. A TPU can be a bit of a funny one to print. Yeah, fair play. Um, it would be okay. interesting to see how well, uh, I mean, what what options would you have for upgrading the hot end on this because of the proprietary cable system? Yeah, well, you would be looking at it, and to be honest with you, you would only, only be able... looking at changing the heat block. Yeah, you're not overly limited with changing the hot end because you've got the breakout board. So you would take the wire, use the same wire into your new hot end. The only issue you're going to have really is your height. And your bowden. No, because it would still run on the same wire system. You say you, your wire runs in, doesn't it, to the breakout board. No, your Bowden. Yeah, your Bowden still comes through the connection for the breakout board. Yeah, but it's not designed to go down through the whole hot end. That's going to be your issue. And the other issue is the size of this hot end is small. Yeah. What other hot ends are that small? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's, that's what I mean, is with, with that proprietary cable design, um, mm. you would have to... Uh, I mean, if you went for all metal... Then I think you'd the only way you would be... do it is you would get rid of this whole shroud, this whole cooling duct, and you would have to print yourself a connector, wouldn't you? Yeah? So, like, you'd have a new hot end down here, mm -hmm. but you'd have to get it so the new hot end butted up to the, the uh, Bowden system they're using, and do like the hot end fix that we we do on the Crealities in the about in the new hot end. I think mm. that's the only. I don't know. Maybe they'll bring something else out. I'm not sure, but in my mind, you'd have to do a lot of playing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. To change that. It, it very the, that proprietary cable is gonna be. I, I mean, if everything operates how it should do then it makes it very user-friendly. Um, so for people who've not driven a printer before, you know, quick setup, easy plug-in, worky-worky, happy day, long time. Um, yeah. But if you're a tinkerer, forget yeah, it. Yeah, if you're customising, I think you'll probably be better off. I don't know, maybe rerouting it, rewiring that section. You know what I mean? Split it open. Well, you, 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 no, you'd go back to before the extruder and take the wires off prior to that coupling and put your own Bowden in, wouldn't you? Yeah, that's probably <clears> the way I'd go if I was really going to go down that route. Um, but we're not going to go down that route. Not planning on it. No, no what we want... <laughs> What we're looking for here is a machine that you put together, press print, and, and print away. And it does something. Print away, Jack. <laughs> print away. Right, Carl's sending me loads of pictures. I appreciate that, Carl, but I'm going to probably catch them in a second, mate. Because um, I think I want to try and get this bad boy together now. I'm, I'm kind of intrigued on what it's going to do. Um... Yeah, I have seen the blue standard flow rate, and it does. It was appealing, to be honest. I was very tempted. Um, I haven't bothered to buy one, if I'm totally honest. Um, I went down the E3DV6 route on my Frankenstein build, um, and for probably the first three months, I wanted to throw the whole printer out the window. I hated it. It yeah. just drove me nuts. It was the worst thing about the build. Um, and then something clicked, <laughs> if you like, and I sussed out basically the best setting for it. And since then, I absolutely love the free 
DV6. It is a great hot end. Um, I don't think I get the potential out of it with the amount of PLA I print, <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> um, but certainly for things like TPU, Petgies and that, it's, it's an awesome bit of kit. See, um, I'm, not, I'm not a very good person to ask about hot ends because I pretty much only print in PLA. I've tried, I, I tried going micro Swiss on my five plus and then I went back to the Mark eight because I've got all the kits to replace them day after day after day. I've got spares up the wazoo and I know they work. <laughs> I think, I think everyone sort of has their own opinion and the only way you can sort of get in there with the hot ends and everything is actually just to try them. Um, some of them work, some of them are dire, some of them are amazing. It, it's just... There's no rhyme or reason with it. Mm. Everybody says they've got the best hot end and then you'll always find out when, when they're discussing hot ends, somebody will say, oh yeah, this is the best hot end and like four comments down it says, now they're shit. Are we still talking Dude, printers here? They just... It, you know, what works for one person doesn't always work for the next person. Yeah. It, it's just a case of what suits you. Um, yeah. I've got a micro Swiss, and yeah, I, we, we were talking about it beforehand, and I do get on with it. I don't mind using it. It's it's all right. It worked great for two weeks. Yeah. It was amazing. Then... In fact, no, correction. It was amazing for two weeks. <laughs> And then Amazing. it was just Clog City. Yeah. So my question there is, when you cleaned it at the end after the clog, how did you clean the actual stem out? Well, you can't. They separate, don't they? Well, yeah, but how are you meant to clean it? Right. Tip for you that I, I uh, discovered the other day. Earbuds are just about the right size to go down that stem. Yeah. Soak it in thinners, the earbud. Yeah, yeah, like acetone. Yeah. And just ram it. Just keep ramming it down there. And I probably went through about ten yeah, yeah. earbuds. Because you can't you, you can't go in there with anything like abrasive or a, a drill no. bit because then you score it and that's the, the whole point of the expense of a uh, micro Swiss yeah, is that you're paying a for a um, a well machined and ground throat. Well, if you if you want to repolish it without using an abrasive, um, look up a product called Peak. It's an actual polish, but it's got no abrasion in it. So it doesn't cause any scoring or any... It's, the... it's basically to revitalise metal. So if you've ever seen brass or copper in your local pubs and it tarnishes, it yeah. goes that sort of yellowy, gully colour. You get peak on a cloth, you rub it on, you leave it for 10 minutes. You get a clean cloth and you buff it off. And it will just vitalize it it'll just ping how do you polish without an abrasive sorry how do you polish without an abrasive well, it, it's got like ammonias and, and chemicals inside it right so they basically what it does is rather than bite into a metal it actually removes staining and you know right so it removes cool. oxidization basically yeah, and it, it's taking off any sort of contaminants off of the metal surface rather than actually biting into the surface. Right. If you wanted to go the other way, I would say look at something like Autosol, which is another like cream-based polish. Mm. But the problem with Autosol, it, it, it has got quite an abrasive to it. So if you were to do it on, say, the same bit of brass or the same bit of copper... You'll get all those swirl effects from where you've clocked it off. Yeah, but where what about what about on titanium, which is what these are? 
Titanium, it would work on Titanium or uh, Auto Soul. Um, as long as you weren't pasting it in and wedging something in there that was so tight, almost to the same bore, you would probably be fine. Right, okay. It's pretty non-expensive, and you can buy it from most car manufacturing, uh, car supply shop. So, like down here, we've got Auto Quip or Mill Autos, if you like, or um, Quick Fit. Yeah, sorry, um, Halfords. You know, they'll all supply P yep. and Auto Soul. You can buy it on Amazon. It's not mega expensive. It will work. It will polish up the inside of your hot end throats. So, nice. yeah, worth, worth looking at. You know, if you're getting consistent problems where things are sticking, it's definitely worth considering sort of giving it a thin as wash and then looking into maybe some water salt. Okay. And for those in TV land, this this is this is auto salt. You got it? Yeah. I can't see it. Uh, I can't see it. Okay. You're not holding it up to the camera. You're burning the camera lines. <laughs> no, it, it should be. Yeah, should be. Ah, there it is. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's what I saw. Um, it is good stuff, but like I say, if it's on a soft metal, you don't really want to be using it because it will scratch your soft metal. You will end up there with like those swirlies and everything else. Um, if it's titanium, titanium's a funny one. Basically, to polish titanium, you want to polish it cold. It's one of the only metals you actually want to keep cool. Most metals, you actually, when you're polishing them, you want them to get warm, and then that way you're being more effective and you're actually cutting into the skin of the metal, if you like. Right. Titanium, if you get it warm, when it cools after you, you started polishing, it actually ripples. It, it, it turns into like an orange peel. So when you look at it, you'll have an orange peel effect, like it's been freshly sprayed from a machine that really isn't designed to spray anything very nice. Okay. So kind of you get an uneven distribution of um, of, of the temper on it, yeah, basically, on the surface. As it's cooling, it cools at different rates due to the density of the metal. So basically it instantly ends up curing or sort of cooling off, if you like, and getting a natural peel effect so it, it undulates. Oh. Um, most of the metals, obviously, they, they just shrink back more or less evenly. So you get a flat layer. So if I was doing steel, I, I nine times out of ten, I would expect that to get boiling hot when I'm using um, you know, my middle compound. It would be boiled to the point you'd have to be wearing gloves or you cannot handle it. Yeah. If I do titanium, as soon as I can feel some heat in that titanium, I'll end up putting it down, going on with another bit of work, get, you know, another bit of metal, and then go back to the titanium again when it's cold. Right. And just keep keeping that temperature really even, not going very high at all, is going to be the key to getting a perfect flat smooth surface if you if you let it get too hot you're going to is be that, is that because does it does it not conduct heat very well so it gets hot spots or something or it, in honesty I, it's a pain in the ass it, it's just a simple way of putting it um it doesn't conduct great at all i mean it'll push heat through itself really well it'll get hot really quick right but it just doesn't like the retraction afterwards. Right. It just, it, it just doesn't like going from excessively warm to excessively cold. You know, 
it won't affect it structurally too much because it is a super strong material. It's not as if you're going to heat it up and when it cools down, it's going to crack in half. Yeah. It's just going to ripple. Interesting. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a bit of a... I, I, I have to deal with titanium in my day job quite a lot. And when it comes in, I hate it. As soon as it comes in that door and I've got titanium to work on, I'm like, here we go. It's going to be a shit day. <laughs> this is, uh, okay. I, I'm now very interested in the crystalline structure of uh, titanium. <laughs> this is a great thing with Neil, having Neil here. Like, I, I've got quite a large box background in... Um, <laughs> mechanics and engineering and um <laughs> all random sort of weird metal work stuff and it, things like that quite easily and quite quickly intrigue Neil <laughs> so having him on this stream could be quite handy because Yes, when when I was uh, when I was doing my engineering degree, um, the uh, material science was definitely one of my favourite things. So the you were more into the actual why does it do that instead of the physics. How can I do that? Yeah, f physics is uh, is definitely definitely there. There's a lot of complicated maths in this white paper that I just opened. Um, <laughs> yeah, you probably opened a kettle of fish on that one, mate, if I'm honest. Yes. Yes. Basically, it's... why they use things like titanium in aircraft rotors? Yeah. Because it's so densely strong. Titanium is, is ridiculously strong. If you take a bit of steel and you saw it with a hacksaw, it's not really an issue, is it? Take a bit of titanium and do, use the same hacksaw, <laughs> it'll be blunt in no time. Yeah. You know, and that's, that's how dense the internal is of, of the metal, I presume. But yeah, well, that's the Ganfield song. That was pretty painless. No, I'm liking this. this is, I've, I'm actually pleasantly surprised because I, when I've seen the yellow and everything, I looked at it and thought, eh, okay, it's yellow. Eh. Now I'm actually <laughs> up over it. You, I you, actually quite like it. <laughs> you, you're, you're getting the feel for the yellow now, are you? Yeah, I'm actually converting <laughs> a little bit to yellow. I'm actually now thinking if this is really good, I'm going to have to turn my freaking LEDs to yellow. To yellow. In my enclosure. Well, e either that or something that clashes with it, with yellow. Yeah, maybe go pink. Or bright green. Or me Yeah, green, 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 green. green. Yeah, yeah, green. Bright green. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I'm hoping, I'm, I'm actually, that's a project that's ongoing with my um, LED, RDBs on... I'm being a bit lax on that one at the minute, if I'm honest. I've got so much other stuff going on. That's all gone on the back burner. But the plan is, uh, on my enders, I, I'm running BTD boards on both of them that support RDB lighting. Yeah. My plan is to actually have the tail go into my motherboard. Right. So it's controlled by my ender. My right. whole enclosure will be sort of uh, controlled by the ender. Um, and I'm still toying with working in a G code that changes the color of them. Right, okay. But at the minute, like I say, that's a bit on the back burner. I've got so many other things, like at this second, this printer, which is quite cool. I'm enjoying it. <laughs> mm, okay. 
So interestingly okay. enough, there's uh, some rough information here and some images about uh, the the phase change diagrams for titanium alloys. Uh, right. So depending on the nickel content um, of the titanium alloy will massively affect the way that the grains are formed which might explain some of the rippling so you can see on this image here um we're getting technical on fucking under your end today aren't we hang on so i'm just about to there we go so are you, are you still with us carl are you getting all this <laughs> we've got a transom from printers to metals <laughs> possibly but we scroll uh, we're just about to scroll down to the next image um Hang on. Right, there we go. Yeah. You can see on there that they seem to form these ripples. Yeah. Which is quite likely what you're experiencing where you get the rapid speed up and slow down in temperatures. You get the yeah. uh, the well, different bands form, which it then... Rather than levels itself. Yeah. It's, it, yeah, it's it's a major problem when when you it when you're doing what I do for a day job as a metal polisher and antiques restoration. A lot of the uh, aircraft uh, sort of stuff we deal with is um, obviously titanium from different eras. Now, when when you go to polish it, you've actually got your first operation if you like is to actually cut the skin of the metal when you're metal polishing you you first start off with some form of compound that will cut the surface there we use a, a compound um <laughs> it it basically that's why you get the polishing dust everywhere in polishing that is the key reason is that first cut is you want to take off that surface. Your second one is then to smooth out, generally, basically, to smooth out the lines caused by that first cut. So you use another compound, which is the dirty black stuff that sticks everywhere, and then you go with a finisher. This is on a very basic. <laughs> Your finisher is a super soft mop that you apply a coloured compound that feeds the metal to give it that shine. So you're, you're layering in different uh, a, a, a coloured compound to force into that, that metal, which is what gives you all that colour and all that shine at the end. Mm. So when it comes to titanium, you hit it on that first cut, which, which cuts fine, it cuts that skin. When you go to smooth those cuts out it heats the crap out of it yeah so what you what you what we're getting here in some of the phase diagrams is that there's a lot of action happening through very small bandwidths so yeah. when you reach certain temperatures uh and then you have heat dissipations happen you're finding different grain structures appear um <laughs> inconsistently across the surface which are then being picked up by the polishing wheel and then exactly. distributed there we go <laughs> nice. there you go so our technical term for the evening is <laughs> exactly like that i like that <laughs> that is our tec technical terms for today right why we've been and it's together this is nearly there to be honest. And now the printers together. Obviously, if we hadn't been doing all the chat and analysis, this probably would have taken literally ten minutes. It, this would have probably taken seconds, to be honest. <laughs> it is actually the only things I've had to really do so far is the four bolts and connect some wires. That that is it so far. I've got all I've got now is, from what I can work out, three screws on there. Yep. 
connect this one in, plug it in, and we're about nice. there. So, uh, if we say on field, how, how how hard is it to build? Actually, I think pretty much anyone who's entering the printer world, if they can't put this together, printing probably, is probably not your game. Probably should give up. Yeah, you should probably be looking at maybe crochet or I don't know, Scrabble. Uh, <laughs> those, like... those, those are both surprisingly difficult skills. Well, yeah, <laughs> but not print as difficult, are they? How, they're, they're how about totally how about cup and cup and ball? Yeah, I mean, to be honest, this is probably. Let's, let, let's gauge it against an ender. This is probably easier than an ender free. Literally, literally, it takes me about four hours to set up an ender. This is easier than an ender free. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's Seriously. like, ad admittedly, I do take my time to ensure that everything is uh, yeah. square I mean... and sorted, and I do an alternate setup route to it but it takes yeah. it usually takes me about four hours to set one of them up and get them printing yeah i think with an ender i think if you go over the top a little bit you're it's it's going to pay in the long run yeah definitely um with this so far other than maybe you know measuring the the, the rails not a lot else you could really need to do with this. It's actually really solid. Nice. I'm actually quite impressed. I think our artillery have actually gone a bit above and beyond, really. They've, everything they've got here is really nicely detailed. The stepper motors, the, the steppers are lovely. They're really nice steppers. I'll, show, I'll, I'll, I'll turn it all around in a minute so you can all see. But they're actually an anodized black stepper motor. But it's definitely been polished first, let's put it that way. It's not a brushed finish on the stepper, which is quite a nice detail. And then they've actually etched them, if you like. They've laser etched them, I would say. They've got uh, the artillery logo on them. Yeah, they're so really, I was... Really nice. we, we're just looking at the artillery website here. Um, yeah. And obviously there is um, the artillery hornet, which is your baseline model. So your uh, your baseline your baseline model, which is uh, effectively the uh, like the stock Ender three, but obviously the artillery version. Uh, yeah. And then it looks to be that the next step up is the artillery genius, um, yeah. which is just you... trying to look at some of the specs on that. But it started playing music for whatever yeah. reason, uh, so yeah. I had to turn that off. Um, and then you've got the sidewinder after, isn't it? Well, the so the the genius. Um, the the uh, the genius seems to have silent board yeah. um it seems to have an i'm going to see if i can find what it was that was making noise and turn it off no it it literally is playing something and i can't find it and turn it off where is it Stop playing whatever you are. <laughs> Turn it off. No, they... I literally can't turn it off. <laughs> what, how much do you know about artillery, or is this been sort of semi useful for you? You know, I I know you know Creality, and you you know you know a few of the other brands. How how much do you know artillery? Oh wow! So while we wait for a response from Carl, so the Genius has a triple depth uh, X gantry, which 
seems a bit overkill to me but <laughs> that's that's crazy nuts dual z screws so it's got dual z yeah silent mainboard um with what looks like a tft 35 so i'd assume that's probably got an skr mini in it i would um yeah i'd imagine so it's got the tft what appears to be like a tft 35 as the screen um may or may not be yeah um, it might be Has it be their own maybe their own version of it, I guess. Yeah, maybe. Um it's also got filament runout sensor and ribbon cables. Uh, okay. Is that is that direct drive as well? What have we got? Yeah, I know I actually Yeah, it's you... good. It's got the. It. Yes, they do do a direct drive on the. Um, yeah, the Genius. the Genius has got the Titan extruder with direct drive. Yeah. See, this has got a. Oh. But that comes in. That comes in at a hundred dollars more than the Hornet. Yeah. For the yeah, same. That's... For the. For the same build area. Um. So. Yeah, that's, that's going to your sort of intermediate user rather than your novice well i mean that's that's all your upgrades isn't it yeah yeah that... well it's, it's a good chunk of them isn't it yeah yeah that's all yeah. your upgrades because you've got your dual z direct drive um it's already got the glass plates but the silent board is the is the kicker really so you you you've got the silent board on there um and the hornet has that got the uh the uh knob and dial yes it has yeah okay yeah, so it, hang on i will uh right while it's there you can see on that stepper driver there look see the stepper Yep. That's actually a really nice quality stepper driver there. Okay. I'm really impressed with that. Okay. Um, right. Okay. So if I spin this and point you down, you can see there we have the knob. Yep. And the screen. Yep. And a full size USB, which is nice. I prefer um, the micros. Yeah. Mainly because mainly because think... everything has been micro to date. <laughs> I think what they've done is give you the um what they've done. I I haven't even looked. I think what they've done is given you a micro, but with an adapter and a USB. I haven't even looked yet. With this how carried away we've been, we've been talking so much gunk. <laughs> yeah, so Okay, they give you a four gig micro SD. Oh, right, so they give you a mic. Then an SD adapter. What? So you can put it into your laptop, I'm guessing. Because my 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 laptop got a micro SD port. So just. And I'll yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I mean it's fair really play. But why something. why have the full size SD in the machine? The, the the CR thirty came with has got a full size SD. Um, <laughs> the CR thirty's got a full size SD and it comes with a full size SD card. What you what you what you got with the uh, with the CR thirty was this. What <laughs> this creases me up. This is actually overkill. Right, so you got your micro. SD with a micro SD to normal USD adapter. Yeah. <laughs> and then you <laughs> then a fucking adapter. Do you <laughs> what? So you adapt your adapting adapter? Yeah. I got 
I, <laughs> I got an SD adapting the micro SD to a USB adapter. What? Why? Why not provide you with one of these <laughs> and, and your micro SD? Or better still, just put a micro SD slot on your machine. Why don't they put a USB in there? That, I mean, nice. it's it's good that they gave you all of those options. I mean, you, to be honest, they've covered every base. <laughs> you, you, you can't really say, I can't yep. work it. I mean, fair play. Fair play. You've got all the adapters. Um, yeah. I, I can't help but think there was probably a simpler way to do it. Yeah. If if you're already <laughs> taking the impression that the most common way that people have been dealing with file transfer is micro SD, then I'm a little bit lost with that one. That one's a bit. Um... Don't get me wrong. I like the fact you've gone above and beyond. I do. I like that. I, that that's the sort of thing I really like with a printer company. It's good that it's that you've got every base covered because if you couldn't put that into your machine, into your computer, or you didn't have the right card to put it into the machine, you'd you be a might bit upset. Yeah, you'd which be again right. is a good step for making it user friendly to your yeah, I, brand new never driven a, a 3d new, printer never touched a printer what can i say you you've how, got everything here plus a little bit how's the it's tight like, how's the tightness of fit on the wheels like if you if you hold them and move them uh, on all the cool. different ones no no right so if you just roll the wheels are there any that are loose? Do they need adjustment? They're all tight. What about on the what about on the uh, gantry and the uh, bed? Right. Okay. So this side's lovely. This side's loose. A little bit loose here. Right. Um. Bottom one's a little bit loose as well, also. Because that's so, that's a that's a common thing that new, like total noobs, uh, will will end totally up with new. is loose loose wheels and not know how to deal with them. Yeah, I mean, to be honest, you could probably almost get away with it. Um, I mean, when I say loose, that's it. Right, okay. That's it. That, that, it was literally it, not even caught at the turn. Um, it's a little movement. Okay, maybe a touch more, but... Yeah, that's got it. I mean, minimum. I mean, quite weird at the minute. At the minute, we're all plugged in now. You've still got a port up here. I've just been sort of like double checking to see, but I, I can't see there's anything else that can go in there. Yeah. So I'm guessing that's a free port. Um, when it comes to spares, I've still got my two spare wheels. I've still got a spare end stop. I've still got a spare nozzle, so that's quite nice. I've got a you know a little stack of resources going there. Yeah. Uh, now the connection cable for your printer, if you like your USB, is stacked right at the back here. It's what? Sorry. So is stacked right at the back here. What's your, that? Your connection with your printer. So right. I'm not sure. That actually is from probably too detrimental. That to be honest, because generally your print your your PC is going to be sort of here, isn't it? Your laptop. 
You're not going to try and be right in front. So on that side of things, yeah, it's quite nice. I, I like the like the fact it's not on this front. It keeps the front nice and nice and clean, if you like. There's nothing other than your SD there. Mm. And then your, your print, it goes at the back here. So, Fair enough. You see what I mean? You, if you've got your printer there, you'd have your PC or laptop next to it rather than one in front of the other. And I suppose, again, yeah. though, with it, with it not being aimed necessarily at print farmers. Um, yeah. It's some, probably nice somebody to... who's... For example, if you had that in your uh, cabinets, you might yeah. end up in a situation where you can't really access that port. Well, I've been thinking about this. See, this this is one thing that's really... It's not designed for an ender enclosure. It's, it's made me scratch my head a little bit, to be honest. And the reason I say this... It's, it's fine with most Ender enclosures. It's not particularly fine with my Ender enclosures. Yeah. Mine, mine has a filament feed system that comes up on the left-hand side to your extruder. That would yeah. be fine. But because of the way artillery has done this, the extruder is on the right-hand side. Right. So it's back to front. Yeah. So for me, my filament being on the left-hand side, going in on our normal extruder point here, yep. I've now got to find a way of getting from this hole over here. Ooh. Yeah. That's not particularly easy. So what We've... is going to happen? I'm going to be printing <laughs> another little uh, port for my enclosure, I think. Yep. And I will end up by feeding up the right-hand side directly into the extruder point. I think is the only way I can <laughs> overcome it. Oh. Yeah, because... Basically, I was thinking, oh, okay, we will put this funky spool holder on and I'll turn the printer the other side facing my other door. I don't think it's going to fit with this on there. Right. See what I mean? I think that's going to be my door there. Yep. So... I think what I'm going to have to do this week is print another port. Because I, I basically printed like a custom port to come up through my enclosure. So my filament, uh, my port had a Bowden tube through it. My filament fed up through the Bowden tube into my extruder. Yeah. So if I print another port and put it on the other side, effectively in line with this, I can get away with it that way. Right. So, okay. yeah, that might be a bit of a... Well, that's probably going to be my weekend, to be honest. Rethinking how the hell I'm going to get this to work in an enclosure. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, having that in a non-standard direction is definitely causing some issues with uh, trying to fit it in with other items that you already own. However, yeah. again, if you were looking at it from a brand new owner perspective, this wouldn't really cause you a problem. Yeah, I, I mean, to be truthful, uh, if I was in a different location, uh, I would just basically turn my enclosure the other way. I'd flip yes. the doors around. I'd take the doors off, put them on the other side, job done. Um, because my enclosure's custom built for its location at the minute, I haven't really got that option. Right. You know, um, but generally, if you're going to build an enclosure for this machine, you it, it wouldn't be an issue anyway, because you would... You would build it to suit. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, the sure. next question being is that really that machine in particular is not really designed for high temperature filaments. So no, therefore yeah. you wouldn't necessarily be putting it in an enclosure anyway. Yeah, exactly that. I, I think it was, what was it, TPU? It was about 250, I think. Really? What, with a PTFE liner? Yeah. I PTFE don't breaks what down I read, at 235. Sorry? PTFE starts to break down at 235. Yeah, I don't know what it's set up. I'm sure I read somewhere it was quite high, but I can't see you're going to ever get up that high. Well, no, because your PTFE will get wrecked. Yeah, you'll just end up having to buy a new one of these, which we've just discovered is sixty quid. No, 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 no. You because you've got you you well, you've you got the hot end go. fix. The hot yeah. end fix is built into it, which is a massive bonus. Yeah, that is actually the. The biggest bonus so far to be honest before before, before we finish uh this evening it would be worth unscrewing the hot end and taking a look at the uh seeing if we can get the uh the bowden out of there and 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 see what that what that looks like <laughs> he's the one to put me in a world of pain don't you maybe <laughs> um yeah it's not actually saying much in here on and Funny enough. It's not saying a lot in the book on sense. That surprises me. I'm going to what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna oh, oh, oh hang on. The only thing it didn't come with, really? Okay, so, all right, <laughs> for one disappointment. So, Bart. No what? There is not a sample of filament or anything. What? Why, so you, you, yeah. you can't just get that from the box and test it? I, we can. <laughs> I mean, we we can obviously we because can. you have yeah. filament. But if you if you were a new customer, first printer, never had anything. There's no PLA. That's yeah, that's disappointing. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, that is really disappointing. Yeah, yeah, I... yeah. I mean, at least Creality gave you just not enough to m finish your first print. Yeah, but at least they gave you a sniff of it. You know, at least you got off the bill plate. Yeah, yeah. But, no. <laughs> there, there is absolutely no filament. Okay. Luckily, we're in a position where we got filament. I'm, I'm not going to worry. You know, we, we have got filament. But, it's kind of a shame, because I would have liked to have thought... All right, if you're buying one, you even get a sample baggie, you know? Yeah, you, you, I, so far I've never had a printer arrive that doesn't have a sample bit of filament. I mean, yeah. I've never Usually. used it. I've, I've never used the sample bit of filament that comes with a printer. Funny but enough, at least I... it's there. I have with all of mine, to be honest, because when I set up, when I first get them, I usually think, ah, oh, crap, let's chuck on whatever is on that dick. Yeah, so whatever they put on there, I generally go, right, we'll print that straight away. That gives me an idea that it's level. Nothing else. It doesn't tell me how well it prints because the companies that build these machines put so much effort into that slice that it's more or less perfect. You could run a stupidly out of calibration machine and it will print that that slice. Mm. But I'll run it purely to make sure, to give me an idea if, if all of this is set up right. Now, the best one I've had so far, believe it or not, the lot max, the lot max, the lot max, that filament was awesome. I was devastated when that went. 
I wanted another <laughs> roll and a half. It, it was just stunning. I was like, wow, this is probably the best filament I've I've used. It was lush. It was only white, but it printed stunning. It okay. was really nice. Okay, so from a new user perspective, that is a massive down point. Yeah, I mean, personally, if I got this printer, I'd be like, well, imagine it. Imagine Christmas Day. <laughs> yeah. You've woken up. You found this under your tree. Yeah. You are now buzzing. You know, this is your first printer. You are like, oh, my God, I am going to print the world. Trust me, we've all been there. You have, you have, you know it. We've all been there. We're, we're like, I am going to print everything I ever need. Yeah. You, you, you basically get it all out of the box. You build it. You follow the instructions. All right, you might take three and a half hours because, I don't know, you, you're watching something on TV at the same time or you're talking on a live stream. <laughs> yeah. So then you plug it all in, you think, right, here we go, we're going all out, we're going to print whatever is on this little black diamond bit. And you've got no filament. Mate, it's I'm Christmas. just I'm just looking at their website at the moment to see if there's any mention of filament included. <clears throat> I'm telling you, if it was Christmas... I would this this would have just started the biggest family argument in my household in decades. Yeah, yeah, because you ain't gonna get Amazon then deliver it on Boxing Day. What are you gonna do? You're gonna phone up your local shop, are you? Hey mate, you got some food. Any chance you could deliver it? Never gonna happen, mate. No. The, the, and that's a game changer for me. That is a real gutter. I mean to this point, I've been really impressed. In fact, yeah, I mean, not hundred percent on this whole school thing. Seems all right. Everything else I've loved. I like the hot end. I I love this yellow. I'm actually really liking this uh, to, now. I'm to thinking, me, to me, the spanner is a massive bonus. The spanner <laughs> that. That is a really nice spanner. Don't, don't go overboard. I mean, it's it's much better than the usual pressed out stuff that you get. I'm just trying to read. I thought you said snap on it first. I, w I would I would like to take that to a rusty engine and see how long it lasts. But you know, it says, I think it says it's, it looked like snap on, but I think it's Shang Hong. <laughs> Shang Hong. I, I don't know. But it's a nice spanner. Impressed. Yeah, there's there's no, there's no mention of included filament on the uh, on the specs. Well, I think this is going to have to be a, maybe a, a discussion I have with them, and just maybe suggest getting some sample rolls in there because so far it's been great until that point. And it, if that's the biggest letdown. It's an easy one to correct. So I I would say, if they aren't going to put a bit of filament in there, it needs to be made very clear that you need to purchase some filament yeah. with yeah. or for the machine. I mean, it's like they they've gone above and beyond with that. Even they've they've actually put a belt adjuster, a proper belt tensioner. Yeah attention are there which is like bang on no i mean I mean, um i mean hardware wise everything looks pretty banging um, yeah the the only major yeah. thing the only major thing on uh hardware wise that we've sort of identified is the position of the wheels for the um for the bed yeah i mean the, the knobs in honesty you could probably get used to because you've got a lot of open space. Have you got room? Because, like, um, for the ender, of course, you it's all quite open. Whereas, of course, you've got those big plastic doobries uh, on the honest, front and back. It's actually surprising how much you have got. When this bed comes forward, 
You can get your hands completely round it. Right. It's actually probably slightly further forward than the ender. Right, okay. So it's got a little bit more... So it's livable. I wouldn't say it's ideal. It's yep. certainly somewhere that I would... Personally, if it was mine, I would look at swapping them out. Mm. Putting bigger knobs on. Okay. Um, but other than that, it's quite nicely sat. So, but, we're fully so, assembled. Are we fully sorry? assembled? My, oh. um, my volume's gone a bit near. Are we are we fully assembled? Yeah, we're fully assembled. I'm just gonna tighten this eccentric up a little bit. And then we're there, we are pretty good to go. So what I will do is then put on whatever slice they put in there and we'll try and get it printed. Nice. While it's doing a little printing, um, I guess we'll have a little look in the instructions and see if it mentions about tightening the eccentrics if needed. Yeah, we'll have a, we'll, we'll have a quick scoot over that and just see what it says. Um, Again, just, just sort of taking a look at it from a um, never bought a printer before experience. Yeah, uh, the, only, the only thing I would have probably liked to see okay all right that's funky on the front here there's sort of uh the pair of allen keys you see here yeah pair of allen keys that's actually an adjuster for this belt look i just noticed then this belt the bed belt was actually a little bit sloppy yeah that's because they've done it so there's absolutely no tension for transit. Which probably isn't a bad thing. Um, well, I'm thinking we better tighten that up a little bit, or the bed could be a, a bit of a jam. Ooh, 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 ooh. So have we, have we, have we still got Carl here, or has Carl gone, or...? No, nope. uh, Carl, Carl has disappeared. He disappeared. To be honest, I think there may have been another stream on tonight as well. I think I seen just before we started, there was another stream going live at about seven. So it may have been a case he's, he's popped off to that one. Well, you know, if you don't want to catch the gold... If you don't want to learn about why titanium ripples like orange peel. If you don't want to learn all these basic, you know, needs. People need to know these things. Well, exactly. And if they feel they don't need to, and they can just swan off into other streams. Exactly. They're going to miss Where out you gold. won't learn about titanium. And they're going to miss gold. This is golden nuggets. This is information that could just set you up for life. I'm not gonna lie. Exactly. It probably won't. Exactly. It probably won't, but <laughs> it might. <laughs> if you ever get to a pub pub quiz and they turn around and say, "Why does titanium orange peel when it gets warm?" You now know. Well, exactly. <laughs> you now know. Right. So. What are we going to do here? We're we going to go with like um, a, a. Does that does that spool holder just clip on, or is it bolt on? No, it's a clipping. It's got like got like a angles and then a double here. So you've yeah, got yeah. This angle sort of hooks in. Yeah. And then you push down, and that sort of clips it in, but not very well. <laughs> there. That's all right. Okay, so um, first test is, have you got a reel? Yeah, I want to see if that gets pulled in. Normal reel, shall we? 
Yeah, I want to see if that falls back down that thing. Okay. Let's try a normal reel. I don't know what reel this is, but we can try it. Okay. Just some white piano. Not quite a full one, but it's a reel. It would take a lot. It then it only goes so far. Oh, okay. The way they've got that angle, I think. The way they've got that angle, it can only get to there. Okay. Yeah, no, that, that's fine. That's fine then. Yeah, that's clever. I think if you hadn't, if I had a bigger hole, it would probably go over. Let's not even go there, shall we? Yeah. <laughs> Luckily, I've, I've got quite a tight hole. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully, over long term age, it won't get bigger. <laughs> <laughs> no promises. <laughs> Don't get slack over time, mate. That's that's the that's the thing. Right. Uh, okay. So my next thought is the next one is going to be I'm not overly fond because you can't see you can't see the old. No, I'm not fond on that. And as we all know, it's really easy to feed filament through an extruder. Yeah, yeah, oh yeah, so easy. If you know, if you've got the luck of God with you. All right, let me just see. Cause my lighting in there is pretty poop. Right, yeah, for the love of God, it can't be. Surely that difficult. <laughs> would help if I took the plastic bung out of it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking thinking there's no hole there. <laughs> is, is it actually a bung or is it like, is it a tube? No, it's a solid. Oh no, it is a tube. Is it a tube? Yeah, it's a tube. Okay, so. That's that's <laughs> a bit of Bowden. Um, it looks the same as the thing on the website that says it comes with the tool pack um which i assume is a changeable if we go down the website to here um there's a, a little black length of what appears to be bowden um, right, okay. which would be for changing the captive bowden i'm with you okay so that makes sense there's me looking up here thinking, yeah, there should be so, something up there. So that's, that's another interesting plus, because it won't eat into the extruder. Yeah. It's, it's kind of nice that they've, they've sort of put that there as a breaker almost. Yeah. Um, because obviously that being one of the number one things that you have to do with a uh, an ender is, first of all, swap out from an aluminium extruder and second of all uh, print a bearing guide yeah. or as i did uh, take a uh, a rope pulley off of an old pub umbrella okay <laughs> and use that instead well, because you know what you don't have to print all your upgrades that's actually really easy to feed. Okay. I was quite surprised. The only thing I'm not 100% sure on, they put this really nice extruder on, which I really do like, actually. That's a really nice extruder, except for the handle. Right. It's plastic. Right. And it's probably all right. It's probably going to do fine. But it's got a bit of flex there. It feels like it's, does it feel like it's going to break or? 
It, it just feels like it's got a bit of flex. And what worries me with that is that over time, if it gets hot and cold, it slowly becomes brittle, as you know, being plastic. It will worry me that that's going to snap at some point. I think, you know, initially, it's probably going to be fine for months. And as long as you actually get your finger up to the top, it will be fine. If you keep pushing it right at the end of the lever, right on the very tip, I think it will end up snapping. Right. <clears throat> so it's something to treat carefully. Yeah. Bear it in mind. Keep an eye on it. Don't go heavy-handed. You know, take your time a bit. I think it will be fine. But again, we're yeah. dealing with a proprietary system, aren't we? Yes. Uh, right. Let's think about the best way of doing this there. There's always that danger when you start going down the proprietary route that, of course, you end up getting locked into a a single supply chain. Yes, very true. Like one of the handy um, things about some of the more generic printers out there is that you can buy spare parts readily <laughs> and cheaply. Well, I might have to disappear for a minute now. Oh, okay. What's I might up have there? To disappear for one minute because I think I've got to find a plug. To find a plug. Oh, okay. Yeah, at least. I won't be a minute. Fair enough. Well, <laughs> um, it seems like we've got somebody else in the chat. Uh, ragtag, is that you back again, or do we have somebody new in there? <clears throat> and they're gone again, so that's fine. Um, well, in summary, uh, what we've seen so far is that. Uh, this is the base model from Artillery. It goes together super easily. Um, the build quality appears to be pretty high. Um, it uses a lot of injection molded parts to be able to uh, create uh, Parts that will enhance its look as well as its functionality. Um, very quick to put together. However, it uses lots of proprietary systems. Um, one of the things it seems to avoid over many of the baseline printers is that you don't have to then instantly upgrade with things like belt tensioners, Ducted fans, <clears throat> um, the aluminium extruders, uh, and things like that. That seems to be covered. It also comes with a glass bed. Um, so, in essence, you should be able to get this and print like a pro straight away. Um, downsides, potentially, are that there are several proprietary systems so if one fails uh spare parts are not as readily available as other other things um and it's number one disappointment thus far is that it doesn't come with any sample filament which may be an issue if you are a first time buyer and don't have oodles of filament um such as we do lying around um, you need to ensure that you order some filament at the same time. So while Martin's getting that plug there, we can only sort of uh, guess and or estimate um, what the noise levels are going to be. Um, 
it does say it's quiet. However, um, their genius one, which is the next one up in the scale, um, says it's a silent board. So uh, that indicates to us that this may not be a silent board. Uh, so we'll see. Maybe it will. Maybe it won't be a silent board. Um, we'll, we'll, we should be able to get quite a good reading on the noise levels once that gets going. Um, <clears throat> obviously, the other downside to this is that um, it didn't come with a UK plug, and we are in the UK, which is why Martin has gone off to try and find one. Um, but other that. than that, other than that, everything seems to be seems to be pretty good on it. And it sounds like Martin has come back. Hi, Martin. Hello. <laughs> I appear with Leeds. I was just doing a quick summary breakdown of yeah. what we've discovered so far. Okay. So yes, the, the, the next big thing is when we turn it on to be able to get a rough idea of what the noise levels are. Yeah. Because uh, it says that it will be quiet. However, with the genius being uh, specifically labelled as a silent board, that it, would... Yeah. Um, that would indicate that this is not necessarily silent. Yeah, it's going to be a case of it'll either be stupidly quiet or meh. <laughs> okay. Believe it or not, that's on. And Sorry? it's silent. It is on. Well, yeah, but we haven't moved any of the axes yet. The problem I've got is a blank screen. Okay. It's... Oh. Oh. Um, not quite how I was hoping this would go. <laughs> oh. Okay. So, um, in that... Lift it up, have a look under it, hit it with a hammer. Let's have a look. I'm hoping this world's now going to shoot off. Right, okay, so they've actually glued the connectors. Right. So those ones can't have come out. Never look at that. We're on the right voltage. Okay, that's strange. So, in other words, yeah. really, it might be a case of having to open it up and seeing what the issue is inside. Um, well, which isn't I, I think uh, I think that might have to wait for uh, additional tinkering. Um, yeah. I would um, say going down the traditional route of uh, turning it off and turn it back on again. Same. Plug the SD card in. I don't know why that would make a difference, but the only thing I can think of is maybe there's a firmware update with B uh, with uh, Big Tree tech boards. They come blank the screens, and you actually have to load 
the firmware onto the screen before it'll actually do anything, which is um, always a joy. That's not the experience I had with the big tree tech. Yeah, now mine was complete blank. Wow. Okay. It was, yeah, it was a nightmare. <laughs> wow. No, I, uh, both of, both of the ones that I've used came with firmware pre-installed. Nice. Nice. You love But then I, but then on the, uh, end of five, I scrubbed that, which you know about. Yeah. <laughs> still yeah, haven't been able days. to get the filament runout sensor to work properly. Sorry? Still haven't been able to get the filament runout sensor to work properly on that. Right. Filament workout uh, runout sensor will only work in uh, not the TFT mode. You have to go into the normal, so hold the knob in, select Marlin. Yes, no, I know. So in effect, yes, I know. Which means that the filament runout sensor doesn't work. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'm having the same. I've got one on my ender. Yes. No, um, I know. I know. I and that and that's fine. I don't want to yeah. use Marlin. No. I want exactly. to use TFT. I want to be in TFT mode. I bought and a TFT touchscreen. Exactly. I I can't. The stupid thing with it is you have the settings in TFT mode. Why does it not work? Well, yeah. Big tree tech, come on! If you if you by any chance stumble across our little stream, here, yeah, sort it out. What the hell is because, going on? You know, well, I mean, what the hell is going on is the fact that they don't write the firmware. Exactly. Yeah, they they <laughs> they let everybody else deal with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's <laughs> it's open source development. Like they don't touch it. Yeah, and it's... that's that's ridiculous. But you know. Whatever. It's silly. They can make all these different bits of hardware and everything else, and yet solving the issues. Nah, don't worry about it. Let the community do that. Yeah, yeah. That leave, leave, leave it to the community. We're just we we're giving it to the open source because we're nice and we like we yeah, like we like to support great. we like to support community development. Open well, source is the future. Open <laughs> source is not the future when it doesn't work. Design no, something, it, make it work. Generally, the future when it's got a basis to work from. Make it work. Do whatever you're doing, but make it work first. Exactly. Come on. Yeah. My filament runout sensor does not work. <laughs> Right. right, and it's on a machine which eats filament for breakfast. Oh, it, it, it's it's mad because like the majority of people they're selling them to, they know print a lot. People buying those sensors aren't printing once a month. They're generally printing nearly every day or every other day or at least. Three times a week. 28 Make hours a day, eight days a week, sir. Yeah. Well, mine's, mine's well, as you know, it's on pretty damn constant. Yeah. So, make it work. Yeah. I don't want to deal with it. I've just brought your product. I don't want to do the development for you. Yeah. Well, that's what we got Simon for. Well, luckily, we have got <laughs> Simon. And Simon does love it. Because he's a nice man. He's a very nice man. He's a very, very nice man. Very he's a very, nice very, man. very nice man, is Simon. Yeah, it doesn't actually say anything about screening here. Does it say anything about fastening eccentrics? Fastening eccentrics. Uh, because, of course, okay. this is the yes, thing. It is, it's, is it's advertised? Yes. It does. Yes, it does. Thick. Uh, adjust adjust the tension on the eccentric nuts with the spanner supplied when needed. So yeah, it it does mention eccentric nuts. Nice. It mentions preheating. It mentions yeah, all the all the good stuff. Yeah. But not okay. screen. 
Okay, is it turned on? Uh, it is now. I've just checked it's on the right uh, settings on the back. Nope. What happens if you press the knob? Okay, click. But I, you... get, I get the noise. And nothing else. Oh. We've got a lit screen. Ish. Like backlit, if you like, but Is nothing that screen else. well lit in it? So, yeah. Shit. I mean, okay. poo. <laughs> Unfortunately, for now, I think that's about as far as we're getting. Well, that, that kind of ends our review. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> of the artillery yeah. hornet um in summary it me. <laughs> in okay. some in summary it seems like it's a very easy to start machine yeah. for a new user its biggest downsides being uh potentially the proprietary parts for uh, long-term maintenance and spares and uh, the fact that it doesn't come with filament yeah that's I think my biggest gripe with it is the filament obviously the screen thing is uh, a shame and we will be able to contact artillery and get this sorted um, I, I will we have would, we would we would we would expect that this is not a standard issue um, no i mean i know a couple of other people that have had these now in fairness and i haven't seen anybody else have this issue so i'm guessing we sort of drew the short straw on this one yeah i mean um, you know it happens it, yeah i mean it, it, it happens um and I am very sure that we will be able to have a back and forth with artillery and we can return to this at a later date. Um, I, I think I'm, I, I should imagine by midweek I will have this solved. The, the interesting thing about this is not that it doesn't work because, you know, we've had experience of similar things happening with new printers off the line before but what it does give us an opportunity to test out now is uh artillery customer services exactly that um <clears throat> and the beauty of this is I, I will get on to them tonight i should imagine all being well i should have some form of feedback tomorrow well i'll tell you what this is this is uh this is something that we can come back to in next week next week's stream um yeah. and we'll be able to feed back our experience of solving problems with artillery which is yeah. just as valuable as having something that arrives and is perfect yeah to be honest i mean i've, I've been on both ends of, of the spectrum where i've had things that Turn up and they just run perfectly. Hey, hey uh, prob we, problems happen. Uh, we yeah. we were just discussing customer services before the stream, and this yeah. is a perfect opportunity to be able to test out what happens when a problem occurs, and yeah. that, as I say, is more valuable than to be able to just go, yeah, yeah, prints. So. Yeah. Yeah, that's, I mean, I, I, that's would a good sooner, thing. I would sooner get a case of this issue happen with me than the likes of somebody that's never had a printer before. Mm -hmm. you know? As I, as I say, um, this, this I wouldn't count necessarily as a negative. Um, however, there is a length of time and... Uh, issues experience with the customer services that could turn it into a negative so we we will see we will see yeah. we'll come we'll come back to it and be able to report on that um yeah. and then we'll be able to do the actual test of the printer itself so yeah we can we can run some 
you know, we can go a bit further then and actually do some bigger tests on it rather than just one watch on the card. Um, yeah, we brilliant. can actually say, yes, it's it, they're easy to deal with. We got sorted within an hour or mm, that took a bit longer than it should have done, you know. And, well, we'll be, able, we'll be able to report back on that. Yeah. But yeah, okay, think... well that's that's fine. We we got somewhere. Um, yeah. It looks it looks in general pretty good, um, and it oh, looks yeah. in general pretty user friendly for the novice. Um, so I I'm I I'm quite pleased with how it looks. To be fair, like the way I mean, the way it sort of comes across. I'm I'm very I'm very impressed with how easy everything seems to just go together it is very simple to go together yes and i mean we we've been messing around for two hours with it but then we've been chatting about a lot of different stuff but not just yeah. getting on with it um like you say i reckon about i reckon about 20 minutes that would be together and ready to go so yeah i, I think realistically if you were sort of if, if you were concentrating and dealing with what you're doing between 15 minutes half an hour and you'll be up and running mm. By all means. And that's that's really not bad. That's really not no. bad at all. No, I think that's pretty good going. And yeah, I'm I'm overall I'm pretty impressed. Looking at it so far, they've done some nice work on it. The, the quality is lovely. Mm. It really is. Really nice quality. You know, that it's polished up quite nice. There's some nice little polish touches, it's a, it brush touches, there's a bit of everything in there and it it seems to work quite well. Until it doesn't. And still you try and print. Oh, yeah. well. Well, we can put that on hold, throw it in the corner, hit it with a hammer, and we'll come back to that at some point. Then. Yay! Yay. <laughs> Another doorstop. Woohoo! Yay! We love doorstops. <laughs> Yay! Nice. Um, so, on, on the other scheme of things that we haven't really covered, what's big in digital taxidermy world? Um... Well, it's been a been a busy old week actually. Um, obviously, we launched uh, the Proxygenators Fabricatum um, last weekend uh, on Friday, uh, and that went uh, amazingly well uh, for the first few days. Um, things sort of reached a bit of a plateau, but ticking away nicely. We've uh, we've gone through five. That's five, count them, five stretch goals. Um, so we've, we've got a, a couple of extra buildings added to that. We've got nice. some damaged, uh, damaged vehicle parts to be added to the modular vehicles. So we're taking that 125 combinations and turning it into like, I don't know, a thousand. I don't know, somebody who knows numbers would be able to do a better job than me. Uh, and I've just finished work on the sixth stretch goal, which is this, um, like which is quite a nice shape, really. I like um, that. We've got the steam whistle pressure release valve, and <laughs> then the pipe stack. So this this is the pressure regulator for the uh, for the whole industrial sector. So I like it. don't don't I let like your it. don't let yourself get caught under pressure, um, <laughs> and you've got you've got fun. yourself a nice place in here that you can hide a squad of dudes in partial <laughs> cover, uh, and they can escape out there. So that's cool. No, I um, love that. Looks, that looks cool. Thanks. I like that. Thanks. And again, without supports, so. All without they support. Be, uh, digital taxidermy, I tell you, if they had supports, it's not digital taxidermy. Yeah. No, we don't like supports. Don't like no. supports. Just a waste of filament. We don't mind being supportive. Yeah. But, but you we know, just don't like supports. supports no. Yeah. So, um, yeah, we've, we've been focusing on that. Um, you might have seen at the beginning of this stream uh, the advert that Theo did. Um, yeah. which uh, is quite funny. Our take on a uh, 80s, 90s toy advert. Um, <laughs> it's, got, it's, it's definitely got that 
feel, wasn't it? That vibe. The VHS. The, the broken VHS feel. Um, <laughs> the, other, the other thing which uh, goes to the uh, level of disappointment is uh, I, I decided to finally bust this out to try and uh, scan in some items uh, so we could test the scanner during this stream. Turns out the software doesn't like it anymore. It's too old, whatever. So that's that's not happening now. We need to find another scanner uh, to, to test some one. Um, 3D scanning um, things. See, um, I feel like the connect is about as far as I ever went into the scanning side. Yeah. And um, I actually went. My my phone come up for upgrade um, about three months ago. So I thought, oh, now I'm going to go back to Samsung. They can, they've got scanners. We'll, we'll, I'll, I'll get a Samsung. So ordered the the new Samsung, rocked up, discontinued the bloody scanner. Of course. Of you course. can't scan with it. It's a different setup on there. Yeah. No, it's exactly the same thing as with that one. And it's it just, I think stuff has changed so much in a, in a very short amount of time. Um, and also with 3D scanning being quite a fringe affair um, because of the uh, quality of output versus expectation, um, it, it's not really caught on enough to support yeah. um, a lot of the companies which have put investment into it. Um, so yeah um we'll get there we'll we'll get some things for you to to all check out um yeah. and i backed the jade labo uh yeah. idex printer so uh i'm on that list we'll we'll have one of those uh as soon as possible um I so we'll be able to go through to be something special i hope so i really no, hope no, so I, I seriously believe that is going to be a machine and a half um well, hopefully it's two machines. Two machines. Well, it's two machines in half. All right. <laughs> no. So it's um, one. So it's one machine then. Yeah, pretty much with two heads. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've, I've well, like we were discussed last week, I've, I've chatted with Jade a lot, and. Uh, it's just the, the vast amount of effort that team is putting into that printer is outstanding. Yeah, I really like the community engagement. Um, mm. And personally, I think that printer is going to suit uh, what we do here uh, better than the CR30 has. So yeah. uh, I've, ma I've uh, managed to shift on the CR30. Uh, that's That's got bids on it. Uh, and I'm putting my CR for my belt money into the IDEX. Um, so hopefully, yeah, I... um, for what we do, that will suit our purposes a little bit better. Um, and we'll have a bit more of a purpose built machine. I, I think um, it's probably the right move, if I'm honest. I think it's going to pan out quite well with that machine. Um, we shall see. From what, what they've covered and what I've seen so far, Print quality is pretty damn good. We shall see. Yeah. I'm um <clears throat> I, again it's Kickstarter, so until it arrives and until I can get my hands on it. Um, yeah. Because that's, that's gonna be the key, is when you get your hands on it, see what you can you can get out of it really. I think that's gonna be the big uh it's one of those things that if it work as long as it works for me, then that's yeah. good. Because I know the CR thirty has worked for a lot of people. Um it yeah. just doesn't work for me. That's not to say that it doesn't work. Um no. because it does. Uh it, it just doesn't fit what we need to use it for. Uh and again that's... it's what we said earlier, it's it's each person's needs are different. Exactly. Which is the same with hot ends. Every everything's different. Exactly. You know, I like I said, micro swiss. I I can work with micro swiss. You don't like micro swiss? Eh, no biggie. Yeah. 
No, it's no. more. Uh, I mean, they haven't had a great run with me. They they had until it clogged, and then I was like, oh, I can't do this. Don't go back to the thing that works because I can't afford down. I can't afford downtime. No, no, this is it. I don't. I, mean, I don't have the machines that I can have down. It's just got. It's got to work, and then when it it's, stops it's working. Of... I've got to get it back up and running fast. Yeah, I mean, it's where I'm quite lucky. I mean, if I realistically, if I've got a machine down, I've got plenty in backup. Yeah. You know, I mean, worst case scenario, it would take probably an hour and I'll be able to swap that machine out and be up and running again. So mm. for me, in my position, I'm quite lucky and. Generally, I've not really had any machines go down to the point that I can't get them running again. Mm. <laughs> so I've got quite a big sort of stock of spares, um, especially for enders. I've got spare boards, spare screens, hot ends. I, I carry, I carry five hot ends. Spare. So if one goes down, swap it out. I don't even bother trying. Swap it out. Take it to work. Unplug it. Yeah. yeah. Repolish the inside. Well, this is this is the other reason why uh, after after the Micro Swiss, it was like, well, I'll just put another MK8 on it because it, all then all of my printers are running the same hot end. You only got to keep yeah. one set of spares. It's it's, it's like yeah. I say, for, from my mind, it's it would be the downside of me buying one of the Hornets is that all of a sudden my spares kit is not applicable to that. Yeah, I'm. I'm quite interested. It looks like it does look like the nozzle itself is an MK8 nozzle. It may not be. I'll have to see. You know, we'll, I'll 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 try swapping one of them out this week. And if it's an MK8 nozzle, then pff, happy days. Um, you know, the the fact that that coupling, that balding coupling, doesn't actually go into the hot end result. It means all I've got to worry about really is a little bit of PTFE. <laughs> well, it's, it's the it's the built-in hot end fix, which is amazing, because that yeah. was always the um, the the downside of the MK8s. Yeah, yeah, that that's their biggest flaw, isn't it? Let's be honest. Um, Absolutely, it's the one thing. Anything... It's the one thing that lets them down. I mean, they work really well. Yeah. You know, I mean, how many people have a problem with them? Well, the main problem they have with them. Is the Bowden not seating properly? Yeah, the uh, your general issue is going to be your uh, your Bowden's moved back out, isn't it? It's not really a case of the hot end itself faulty. Yeah. So yeah, and, and overall design, it's a really good design. Yeah, you know? I mean, you know, it's simple, it's functional. I mean, what what yeah. more do you need? And, until you start looking at exotics. In which case you need to go all metal to print over two hundred and thirty degrees. Well, this is it. I mean, but if you're looking at exotics, then you you want to be looking. You yeah, by that point, you should have sort of been upgrading your printer anyway. Well, yeah, because there's multiple things that you need to do. You need to change your extruder. You need to go all metal. You need to start looking at enclosures. You need to, there's, if you're putting it in an enclosure at those temperatures, you need to then externally mount your uh, control board, you know. Your screen, your power supply. The whole, the whole kit and caboodle changes. Yeah, you know? I mean, I'm, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm all for playing and, and uh, upgrading, but you, you've got to run before you can walk. Yeah. To, a, to to my mind, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. You know, it's exactly. like you see you see all these people with monster ender threes and stuff, or monster enders or whatever, and just like, well, for starters, that's not an ender. Um, no, and, it was an ender. You've basically swapped everything out now. Yeah, and for seconds, why? Yeah, what you gained? <laughs> not a great deal. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, me, everybody's got to have a hobby, right? Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, for me, I've, I've, uh, I've been across pretty much most of the machines now. I've been through quite a lot of machines in various forms. 
Um, and when I wanted to go more exotic, I actually decided, no, it was time to make a printer, and hence where Frankenstein that we talked about came in, yeah, yeah. into play. Um, we, well, I say, like I said before, we, we, we uh, went and thought all the top parts that we could find at the time, and tarnished it all together, and that's what I class as my exotic machine. You know, if, I, if I'm coming up to printing something a little bit unusual or a little bit weird, that will come back down here, yeah, and that yeah, will yeah. get turned on. I've just never felt the need to print with anything but PLA. No, I mean... I, also, I, the other thing being is if you start printing with anything other than PLA, you'd be less inclined to have it stuck in the same room as you. Yes. Yeah, there is this. I mean, as soon as you're going up to those exotics, there are smells and there are other sort of issues to be more worried about. And you've you've got to actually think about that before you just go straight out and buy that roll. It's so easy for, especially at the moment with so many um, people trying to promote filaments, and, um, you know, buy one and do a review and we'll refund you and all the rest of it. Well, that's all right. But if you haven't got the place to print that material, don't get sucked into it because it ain't going to end well. No. No, no, no. And you know the interesting thing is, is it's cheaper to buy ABS than PLA because obviously PLA is the most popular yeah. filaments out there. Mm, yeah. You know. Yeah, I mean, ABS... I don't overly like ABS, if I'm totally honest. Yes, no. it's strong. But unless you're set up for ABS, you are going to get warpage, shrinkage, and, and all sorts of real annoying issues that you're going to pull your hair out over and until you've done a load of research and played with it you're never going to figure it out no, it, no. and uh, that that cheaper roll is going to cost you 200 quid to be able to print with it you know yeah yeah it's going to cost you a lot of money because you've you've then got to control your ambient temperatures and you've got to be able to make sure there's absolutely extraction, zero wind extraction, coming through. Extraction, hot and... end, um, cabinet, um, mounting your control boards outside, um, yeah. and then the amount of reels you go through trying to dial it in. And then once you've done all that, you're good. And then what are you going to do? Print out a few Lego bricks and go back to PLA? <laughs> yeah. You might try and do a car wing mirror. Trust me. It ain't worth doing. No. Spend the 40 quid, buy the wing mirror from the shop, injection molded. <laughs> it's not worth the hassle of swapping over for it. Unless it's something you're going to be doing all the time. If you're going to be printing ABS all the time, then crack on. You know, I've got not, no problem with guys printing in it. But I, what, what I'm talking about is it, your general users. You've only just started with PLA and you think, yes, I want to print ABS because it's so much stronger. Yeah, it's not that much stronger. <laughs> it's a lot more work. It's a lot of money to get there. And a lot of headaches. It, it is a lot of headaches. <laughs> it is. I mean, I've, I've got, so I've, I'm guilty. I've got a roll of it in my cabinet. I have got a roll of ABS. But I use it for making things like mounts for hot ends and things like that, you know. Something that needs that extra temperature level, that it can withstand that extra little bit more temperature or is that little bit more strength in it. Mm -hmm. But that roll's lasted me 12 months. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. PLA roll. Be lucky it'll last a week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Nice. So, yeah. Cool. Yeah. Well, I think I think we've 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 gone on for uh two and three quarter hours. Um so uh I reckon we killed uh, a hornet. Sorry? We killed a hornet. We killed a hornet's nest. Uh, <laughs> we didn't even start it, but we yeah. killed it. <laughs> well we'll 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 revisit that and come back yeah. to it next week. Um Definitely. and uh I guess uh we'll say goodbye for now and We'll catch you all next week for another exciting adventure of Digital Taxidermy Gets Under the Hot End. Uh, and uh, 
we'll have to see what we can bring next week to the table. Yeah. I mean, we, I, I mean, we can certainly uh, roll over the the giveaway, can't we? Um, uh, you know, I'm, if you're good with that. Yeah. We can well, roll over um, the giveaway. I, I think you should probably get in touch with Carl anyway, and we'll drop we'll drop him a code. Uh, okay. Yeah. For, cool. For, cool. Yeah, so for being. I think extremely active in the thing so we'll sort that yeah. out carl you can uh you can have it's yourself anybody, um it's sort of free next week um around half past six is a start next week next thursday drop in and what we'll do is we'll try and roll over some sort of giveaway or something um and the key's going to be you be active and you know the more people we get in here you know the better we'll sort of make it. Yeah, give give fifteen people in chat, and then that will trigger a giveaway, and we'll do a thing, uh, and uh, get you all to participate, and then we'll find a winner. What? Do it. Guan 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 Guan. You will. You will. You will. You will. You will. Guan Guan. Get your nan, your grandma, your uncle, your auntie. Yeah. Whoever you can, just get them all to log in and, and just even if they speak for the first 10 minutes, we'll work out a giveaway. All, all your friends, your enemies, people you don't like, people you do like, people even your you never talked to before. We don't mind. We're not fussy. Yeah, just bring them all. Just bring them all. Bring them anyway, all. anyway, uh, don't forget to follow us on Twitch. Um, like and subscribe on YouTube when this goes live on the YouTube. Obviously, you can find Martin on under the Hot End Facebook group. Um, now he's pretty active on there. There's lots of things going on, special yeah. offers, deals, news, all sorts of things. Uh, you can catch us at our website, Facebook page, Facebook groups, uh, digitaltaxderby.co.uk. Just search Digital Tax Derby on any media channel. You'll find us. Yeah. We're everywhere. We're pretty busy doing all sorts of stuff. Neil's everywhere. And, he's, he's even here. Yeah, I'm here as well. And you know what? I don't ever sleep. So you can catch me most times, day or night. So uh, feel true. free to ping us a question if you want to know more about titanium um, or stuff <laughs> like that. Uh, because I'm very interested to learn. Drop them in this, this stream and I'm sure one of us will pick it up before next week and we will try and pick that up too. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so yeah, leave us a comment to say what you might like us to cover. Uh, we would definitely be interested in researching more stuff. Um, if there's anything you want to hear about, or you know, um, it doesn't even have to be about printing. Uh, we'll talk about any old crap. Uh, so pretty much, pretty much. <laughs> we will. We will. Uh, dare us. Double dare us. In fact, we'll do it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah triple. I'm up for it. I'm, I'm up for the occasion. I will work out something about that exactly that topic we, okay. we will work it out so for now bye bye from me and bye bye from me yeah there we go nice good one <laughs> we'll see you next week bye 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 bye